All right, so I'll call the meeting. Okay, so I'll call the meeting to order. It is 7 p.m. And uh, we don't have any alternates, so we can't seat them. Are there any additions or changes in the uh, order of the agenda? Uh, I do have an addition. Um, yep. And I emailed everyone I'd like to add to uh, commission open discussion. There's a um, there's been some interest in the Christie subdivision, and um, that was previously approved by the Wetlands Commission in 2008. So the real estate agent um, who just joined, actually um, representing the, the seller, would like to discuss with everyone how to go about getting reapproved. Okay, so you can add that to uh, commission re, uh, open discussion. Okay, very good. Um, other than that, uh, is there any communications or correspondence? Uh, Josh or Isabel, do you have anything? Uh, nope, not at this time. Okay, very good. Uh, we don't have any audience of citizens this time. But so let's get right into our old business, which we don't have any of either. <laughs> okay, uh, new business. So let's talk about item 7.1, IWWC 2122-27, application of John Marshall to construct a boardwalk over wetlands to assess the owner's land at 265 Route 87, Assessor Map 017, lot number 002 in the RA zone. Uh, can you give us a rundown on that a little bit, what they're trying sure, to do? Absolutely. So um, John is a new resident of Columbia, and he has about 130 feet of wetlands that he'd like to cross to get to the remaining, I believe it's two acres of his property, the back of his property. Um, and we discussed how to go about that. He'd like to uh, do a board boardwalk through the wetlands uh, where it's very wet and just place, I believe, large stones for the footing so there's not a lot of fill. Um, and I think it's, it's something that would be beneficial for everyone to uh, go out and do a site walk and see in person. Um, I believe I said it's about 130 feet uh, that he would be crossing. Okay. Um, so what we have to do is accept the application because it's new. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept the application? So moved. Okay, second? I'll second I'll second it. Okay, so moved. Thank you. Uh, do you think it requires a site walk? I think it would be good just to take a look at. Um, the drainage area there isn't too significant. I've uh, looked at it in person, obviously, and I looked at it on um, Prague, but it does ultimately off his property turn into a water course that runs behind his neighbors. Um, I don't think what he's proposing is especially significant, but I think it's worth Taking a look at him. Okay, we can do that. Uh, by the way, John would uh, John Dilworth is online here now. Uh, he can take Tom Archambault's uh, place. Okay, so he could fill in for Tom. Good, perfect. Yep. Uh, okay, so uh, do we want to set up a uh, site walk maybe this Saturday? What's the weather like on Saturday? Anybody have any uh, idea? It's potential rain. Oh, it is. <laughs> Maybe uh, we can set it up for a different date. Uh, how about the following Saturday? Let's see, that would be the 12th. How about the 19th? <laughs> we don't know what the weather will be like, but we could always cancel it again if we need to. Nine o'clock on uh, the 19th? Okay. All right. Most, most of you can make it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Very good. Yes. What What time did you say, or didn't you? Nine o'clock. Nine a.m. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we'll take a run out there. I know exactly where it is. It's not too far from the senior center. 
on 66. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, next is the approval of the meeting minutes. Do we need uh, to vote on that motion or did oh. we vote on the motion or did we just make the motion? No, we got to vote. Oh, that's what I thought. I yeah, we have to vote on it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> so moved. Thank you. Every, that's, Aye. Approved. Uh, next is the approval of the meeting minutes that everybody get a chance to read them. And uh, I complimented Josh on a uh, excellent job uh, in writing them and uh, Isabel for correcting them. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's start out with uh, item 8.1. One, which is our regular meeting minutes of February 7th, 2022. Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay, a second I'll on second. that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. So Aye. Second one is uh, item 8.2, site walk minutes of February 22nd, 2022. Do I hear a motion to accept them? Somebody want to make the motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to accept them. Okay, very good. I'll second. second that. Okay, Ron, thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 And <clears throat> item 8.3, special meeting minutes of February 22nd, 2022. Do I hear a motion to accept those? Again, I'll make a motion to accept them. Okay, uh, second on that, Mary. Nope. I don't recall if I was there. I may have to abstain. Oh, okay. Do not. But Ian. I'll make I'll make a second. All right. Very Ian. good, Ian. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, next item is audience of citizens, and uh, we don't have any today. Uh, and commission open discussion. Do we have any open discussion? Is it, is it where we might have a chance to discuss uh, my uh, my item? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, let me take the liberty yeah. of introducing myself. My name is Jim Sillyell. I'm a real estate broker in Hebron with Century 21 All Points. And I have the, uh, the Christie subdivision on Route 66 listed and have had for a little while here. And uh, in kind of a, a unique situation, which I'll try to encapsulate and be as brief as possible, um, you don't find too many subdivisions approved. Uh, the first approval here was by your Wetlands Commission back in 2006. Eventually, it was approved by planning and zoning um, in 2008, late 2008. Um, and none of the lots conveyed. Nobody ever came in and attempted to get a building permit, but recently we had that happen. And the zoning enforcement officer came up with some information that uh, we need. To, I, I'm looking to, on Mr. Christie's behalf, uh, those involved to get some guidance on. The shortest version I can give you is that um, the subdivision was approved. Uh, I guess there is a sunset clause on the wetlands approval of five years, which escaped everyone that was involved with it over these years. So. Uh, a, an application was filed with your and in, in review by your zoning enforcement officer on lot two of that subdivision. Um, there is the, the, the plan that was approved uh, showed only one piece of activity within your uh, regulated area at the time. I think the com one of the, the complications here is that <clears throat> over time, one of the modifications made to your regulations was that the upland review area was changed from 75 feet to 100 feet. So on lot number two, there was with, with outside the 75 feet, um, there was uh, no activity, no, no activity that came within the 75 feet, forgive me. If you extend and come compliant with the 100 foot uplands regulations uh, that are in play now, 
there is a swale, a drainage swale, which is located in an open former pasture land area for the abutting lot to drain to the east across the rear of lot two. Um, and if you put the 100 foot uplands uh, review area in, there's no driveways, there's no septic systems, there's no reserve areas, there's no grading or anything planned with the exception of where this uh, um, swale is, is to be placed. Um, so we're looking for some guidance. Uh, evidently, we have an, an expired approval. We have a situation where field cards have been filed, conservation easements recorded, taxes paid as building lots. Looking to find out how we might go be able to go about to uh, to see what we can do about getting approved plan on this this lot number two. Okay. Well, I would think that uh, you would have to put in an application again because the one that you had previously expired. And uh, then we would set up a, a meeting as, as far as uh, our uh, Inlands and Wetlands Commission and uh, talk it over and see if uh, there's any problems and uh, see if we could accept it or not. John and Isabel, because the application or the permit that was issued was for the entire subdivision does the entire subdivision have to be resubmitted uh that's kind of what i think jim is is looking for a little bit of guidance on is just which which is easier um not every lot has wetlands necessarily only a couple do um but maybe it's easier to just bring the entirety of the subdivision back um for one approval altogether I mean, that, that would be my gut because then it is, I mean, because I guess for me, it draws in a question of, of part, I mean, the planning and zoning approval is based on an inland wetlands approval. And if the inland wetlands approval doesn't exist anymore, does the actual zoning approval exist anymore is one of the questions I have. Yeah. If, if I could just interject, obviously, you're getting right to the heart of the matter. I mean, you know, didn't get on the phone and call lawyers and say, well, what does this mean? I figured we'd come to the commission first and say, what's your, what's your preference and see if we can't, you know, figure out how to best rectify this. One, one of the things about the subdivision is there are no public improvements. There's no roads or anything. I mean, it's five lots and there's driveways and there's obviously been a, as you mentioned, you know, an inlands, or sorry, a wetlands approval, uh, which subsequently you need for, for zoning. So, um, you know, th those are questions we don't have the answer to. I don't know. I, I was, I, um, both Isabel and Connie gave me a lot of their time in trying to figure out where to go next. Maybe, maybe I have to come back in and sit down with, uh, with them and, and uh, Ms. Stahl and, and figure out how we, uh, you know, is there anything in particular that we need to prepare to come to you? Um, do we have to do a complete new plan? Can we take the existing plan and talk about the differences like in the inlands? Uh, um, wetlands regulated area, uplands re review area. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing I'm specifically looking to get some idea on. Well, I, I think first of all, we would probably have to see the area again because it's been so long that I'm sure my memory doesn't uh, uh, meet the requirements. But uh, uh, if maybe what we ought to do is uh, set a site walk after we uh, on the 19th again make, and uh, make a site walk to the area just to take a quick look and see what's going on. Okay. Um, yes. in, interrupt, but in some information that we did provide, which I think Isabel has, um, there is a proposed site plan for lot two, which does show the change in the, the uh, uplands review area and shows specifically what is planned for that lot by somebody else. So that could be a good illustration of, of, you know, of a change of a, of, on that. Um, I believe that we probably, uh, I could probably mock up um, fairly accurately some of the changes that would be shown on what's been approved in, in relation, at least in relationship to the uplands review areas. That so would help a lot, right. Slight walk. Do you, I mean, to, I'm just looking at that plan right now. I'm not seeing quickly, has the wetlands been redelineated? Um, no, nobody went out and redelineated them, no. I mean, I think if we get into a permit, you're going to have to redelineate those wetlands because 
15 years, if my math is, is correct, those wetlands could have changed. Agreed. I, I mean, Isabel, my, I guess my biggest question would be is, and I don't know if the attorneys need to, in the town need to make a determination is what is the current status of the overall permit? Right. Um, because it, like I said, if my, if my understanding is correct, planning and zoning's approval is based on our approval. If our approval no longer exists, does the planning and zoning approval exist? And that's, and I, that's think, I, I, I think we'd have to answer that question first. And then, mm -hmm. it, and then it, it, if, you know, depending upon what that answer is, it would spells out the next steps. Yeah, yeah. That's something I definitely intend to talk to Paula and uh, the town attorneys about, because I think um, when this when this came in, it was kind of the end of the week, and I believe Paula was already out of the office, so I didn't I didn't get a chance to discuss it with her yet. But my understanding is, yes, you're correct. So the wetlands approval um, comes first, and the PZC approval is dependent on that. Right. Um, whether or not our approval lapsing invalidates the PZC approval, I'm not sure. I think you know maybe this is this something that we could discuss with the attorneys, but I think the first step is definitely to get that wetlands uh, approval redone. Because regardless of um, it needs to go through the approval process again, and hopefully it wouldn't be a long drawn out thing um, like it was originally because the maps already exist. Um, if it were to go through the whole approval process, it, it would need to come to the commission, the wetlands commission first. Okay, very good. John. I John, yeah. yeah, I have one question. Uh, sure. I didn't look at the plans that well, but are all the lots the same as they were originally? It's just one lot that's being built on now, but the, but but the subdivision itself is remaining the same? It remains the same with one small exception. Um, Mr. Christie had a boundary line agreement that he did with Richling and I can't think of the, the person to the east um, a few years ago, it did not substantially alter. It was a boundary adjust, a, a boundary agreement, but it didn't change his meets and bounds. It referenced the subdivision map. So to the best of my knowledge, no, there's no substantive change to what was approved in, um, in 2006 by your commission and 2008 by the Planning and Zoning Commission. But it, it sounds to me like the whole subdivision has to be approved, re-approved. Well, that's the question. I mean, you get into yeah. some things that are a little bit unprecedented. For example, yeah. um, you know, I guess I guess when you do it when you do a subdivision and you're the owner, and you um, get notified and there's a lot of maps and a lot of notes, you know, what's what's the obligation? If you have a five year sunset, is there any obligation that that you have to mark that diary? Of that is there any municipal obligations to inform you that that's coming up and all those things? I mean, Mr. Christie is, is I, I'm just not speaking of, is an absentee owner, you know, not in this area anymore. And he owns the property, but he's not here to see the public notices and everything else. So, you know, that's that's where I was talking with Isabel and I think she's got a, a wonderful suggestion. There might be some technical yeah. things that we all need to know from the town attorney, you know, to give us direction to, to, to see what we can do here. Correct. Well, I think it would be good to have a site walk, at least we could see if there's any new uh, areas that need uh, uh, studies, or we might be able to find the wetlands ourselves and make some decisions at the next meeting. Surprisingly, there's still quite a few of the markers in the field, but not all of them. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. good. That, that'll help. Yeah. Okay, so we can make that a second site walk for us on Saturday. Saturday, the 19th. All right. Okay. What time would that be at? 9 a.m. Uh, well, it'll be uh, about 9.30, 9.15 to 9.30, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate you guys. Okay, bye-bye now. Okay, next item on the agenda would be uh, Administrative reports, uh, Isabel, you have uh, some list to hear. Yes, so I did one administrative report for Steve Harrington. Uh, he's putting a barn on his property where the tennis court currently is. Oh, okay. Uh, he's yeah. ripping up the whole tennis court and putting in a barn, a covered porch and doing some other small work. Um, 
I believe it lists a deck as well off the side of his house that's covered. Um, and so I, I worked with him quite a bit with the ZEO to uh, go back and forth and go over his nutrient allocation plan um, because he needs some additional uh, infiltration in there, even with ripping up the tennis court. Um, so he's, he's infiltrating the barn and all other new impervious surface by um, at least an inch. And he's got some lawn features that we're, we're recognizing for him as well. And he, he added some infiltration to his roof. Uh, so that approval is for the few couple different things that he wants to do. Um, the bar and the deck and changing a patio. Uh, and then all the associated infiltration to comply with the town's nutrient allocation plan. Okay. Uh, and then and I now, did, you, oh. did you say you gave him approval? I did, yeah. yes. Okay. He's the barn itself is about 185 feet from the lake. Um, that uh, that that tennis court is up on a hill, right? Yeah, it's on, on a, the other side of the uh, road. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I play a little bit of tennis on that court. <laughs> <laughs> is that well, right? The court's on the lake side. It's it's next to his house. It's not the one. Oh, okay. Right. I'm thinking of the court down the street up on the other side. Okay. Oh, that's, no, that's gone, there. Tip. That, that has a house on it now. Yep. Okay. Yeah, he had it in a while. A um, so it's <laughs> the closest edge of it is, I, I believe, uh, from memory, about 185 feet from, from the lake. Yeah, it's pretty far away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything okay. else, Isabel? Yes, I have another couple that I just did recently. Um, I don't know if they've been finalized and put in the paper yet, but I did send them out to the applicants. So there was one for Jim Blair at, uh, let me see if I can remember the address off the top of my head, I apologize. 18 Airdoni Road. Yeah. Uh, extending an existing patio um, by about 150 square feet. So again, he's infiltrating all of that new uh, area that's that's being added. And then he's doing some subsequent infiltration in the yard itself to capture runoff from the lawn to further comply with the town's nutrient allocation plan. Um, the pad or patio, I believe is uh, 150 feet from the lake and I didn't have too much concern with it, given that he was infiltrating it and uh, he's got a good plan for silt fence and other sediment and erosion control measures. Uh, Isabel, what's the name on that? Um, it is Jim Can Blair's already... applicant and yeah. Emma. Uh, Elamir and Emma Nyardi. Yes. They happen to be neighbors. <laughs> Two houses down. Yeah, I think the, the biggest um, thing to consider there was really just the infiltration for the lawn. Uh, but again, I'm, I've been working with Jim uh, just to make sure it's done appropriately. And Ron, it used to be the old Walt Carter cottage that was rebuilt. If you're familiar with that, Carter Chevrolet. Well, which one is that though, Mary? I I know them all. I don't know her her name though. Oh, it's uh, in uh, their next door neighbor is the Morosics. So it's between the Morosics and Paul and Diane Wisnafsky. They just rebuilt <clears throat> about five years ago. Now I, now I, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's up on a hill. Beautiful landscape up on a hill. <clears throat> and it's it's a it's a distance from the lake, so I guess I don't have the. Oh, clearly. Yeah, Isabel, did you say 150 at least? Yeah. yeah, I believe so. And it's only an additional uh, 150 yeah. square feet that he's he's going to be yeah. adding that'll be infiltrated. Uh, and then, did anyone have any further questions on that one? No. Okay, I have uh, one more that I did on 314 Route 66. Um, which is for the owner, Ed Madrak, and he wanted to uh, place a shed on his property next to his house, um, about 20 by 30, and it's roughly 80 feet from, from wetlands. So I had him 
do a permit and do some infiltration for that as well. Okay, very good. You're here. Okay, thank you, Isabel. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what's that? I said thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, last item on the agenda, adjournment. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? <laughs> oh my goodness. Motion. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Barry. I can get to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> There's basketball on tonight too. Yeah, that's yes, there is a basketball game. I was trying to figure out how to nicely say I have to leave at eight. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we knew that already. Right. That's why we, some of the rest of us have to leave at eight too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mary, we'll let you make the motion. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Thank you, John. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. All in favor. Aye. All right. All right. All right. Go oh, hustle. You come. <laughs> oh, <laughs> take Thanks, it easy. Everybody. Isabel, great job. Thank you. Yeah, nice job. Thank you. Isabel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.